Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today, good day, mate. We're gonna react to an Australian academic accepting Islam after surviving 1,200 days as a hostage by Muslim convert stories. Honestly, you guys are the best, man. Every single day, I'm getting new video recommendations of you and every single day, I think, hey, I've seen it all. But of course not. Today, I'm getting surprised yet again with an Australian man that survives being held hostage and then converts to Islam. Of course. With no further ado, let's have a look. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum this salam. is a bit unusual from the other conversation stories out there. It's a story that. of resilience, hope, and destiny. It is a story of Timothy Weeks, an Australian academic who survived three years as a hostage, but instead of feeling resentment towards his former captors, he decided to convert to Islam. It's a decision that I will never regret. And you know, it, it has really changed the way that I look at the oh, world. Man. So stay with us. It's worth every bit of your time. Timothy this, Weeks was born and brought up on a farm situated in a vast Australian countryside town called Wagga Wagga. <laughs> Timothy grew up in a devout Christian family, a happy home, amid fresh fruits, livestock animals, and had a beautiful landscape as told by him in some of his interviews. Fast forward to his adult life, Timothy attended and graduated from Cambridge University, earning a postgraduate diploma in English education. According to him, his aim in life is to provide succor to the downtrodden, and this he did right after his Cambridge education. Timothy moved to the Middle East, precisely to Palestine, Thailand, and Timor-Leste, to teach Most English Thailand. in several schools for 20 years. During his sojourn in the Middle East, he came across an advertisement for an English teacher role at the American University of Afghanistan. He applied and got accepted. It was here his journey took a dramatic turn, as most would say, but as Muslims, we know he only followed the path of destiny. Life in Afghanistan Timothy flew to Kabul, Afghanistan, from Dubai in 2016. He was welcomed with an intimidating mountains landscape, not knowing a rude shock was awaiting. His intended role at the American University was to design a curriculum for the Afghan police force. However, life had other plans for him. On the August 6, 2016, just after a few days in Afghanistan, an unexpected twist occurred that was to be the beginning of years of solitude, suffering, and confinement right in front of the American University of Afghanistan. Timothy and his colleague, Kevin King, an American, were abducted in a commando style by a gang working for the Taliban and escorted to a waiting car staring down the barrel of a loaded AK-47s. This was exactly 33 days after he arrived in Afghanistan, as recollected by him. The Abduction Timothy and Kevin's abduction received immediate widespread media coverage across the globe with the then US President Barack Obama staging an immediate rescue operation but through but the but Navy SEAL. His first ray of hope occurred right there immediately after they were abducted when one of the armed men cleaned the blood on his head to check the extent of his cut. It dawned on him that they were needed alive. By who and for what? He would soon find out. They were taken through Kabul at breakneck speed till they got to a remote rocky location where they left the car and set off on foot. Initially, the English teacher refused to get out of the car because he feared the worst was about to happen, an execution, which later turned out to be a false alarm. The hike Thank through God. the rocky landscape lasted over eight hours and was a torturous one. Luckily for Timothy, he was wearing boots, not so much for the older Kevin. After a while, they got to a designated exchange location where they were hurled into another waiting car to continue the journey 
to an unknown location. The journey finally came to an end. All hopes of rescue, escape, or release, all but lost when they were received by a Taliban group. <laughs> Life in captivity. For Life in captivity started with a sudden dawn of reality for Timothy and his co-abductee. They were now prisoners of the fundamentalist Islamic group, the Taliban. For three and a half years, Timothy and Kevin were moved from one location to another, from cell to cell, mostly to avoid being rescued by both Afghan forces and the American Navy SEALs. Several unplanned relocations happened when the Navy SEAL got close to rescuing them. One of them was nearly successful, according to Timothy. The rescue operation put a lot of strain on the Taliban fighters, with several losing their lives in the process. I talked to a Polish soldier that fought with the French back in the day in Afghanistan. Fought. Well, he was occupying the land ultimately, and he said that he's never seen people like the Taliban because they were not acting like people within those mountainous areas. For him, it was absolutely unique. He said he's never seen people move like that throughout the mountains. They, in turn, would show their frustration by beating the prisoners. It was a prison, was what Timothy used to describe his living condition for the three and a half years he spent in Taliban captivity. It was much worse during them. the first year oh. as they were kept With in box cells Islam. devoid of the sun. He recalled the cells being mostly infested with mice and ants to the point where they could trigger an anaphylactic shock. Oof. Keeping the cell clean was his responsibility. Failure to do it would mean incurring the wrath of the commander who would beat him occasionally. Surviving was quite hard for him because he was constantly kept in chains. Other times he would be forced to wash during the peak winter period with icy cold water. Food wasn't better off Inhumane, man. There were Some people are true devils. I'm really wondering how you can behave like this. They fed a meal I don't of understand it. and rice a day. A ray of hope for freedom. After a year, the Taliban, hoping an exchange could occur at any time, started feeding the prisoners better with grapes and pomegranates, in addition to moving them into nicer cells with windows. It was a moment of relief for weeks, as hope, which he had lost, quickly crept back into his consciousness. The decision to embrace Islam. Okay. During the time of better living conditions, Weeks was grateful, and he needed to show his appreciation in a way, but how? He had no idea. Moved by the unrelenting faith of the Taliban fighters had, he started to contemplate accepting Islam. How? Timothy started learning the ablution process and the five daily prayers. He formally converted to Islam. He changed his name to Jibrail. This is so crazy to me because we as humans of course judge something at face value. Habib Nurmagomedov once said that non-Muslims do not read the Quran or the Hadith, they read the Muslims. So therefore all he had in his environment were people that mistreated him. He was held like a slave and even worse, like a prisoner, beaten, living in filth. So all he saw, those Muslims being violent towards him, he must have thought that this is Islam. A real really wonder how he then accepted it. It would be really amazing to hear him speak. He was asked why he chose Islam when negativity about Islam was sweeping the West and elsewhere in the world. Yeah, in he front said, of him. It was unfortunate that Islam was portrayed as a threat rather than a religion of peace. This does make sense. Jibril said oh. after the release, his ordeal began at his home in Australia when he was alienated for converting to Islam. As mind-blowing as this story is, unfortunately it doesn't give me enough information about this man. We do not understand the psychological state he was in. We do not understand how he saw the Taliban. We do not understand how he saw Islam or how Islam got in contact with him. How he actually went into the possibility of converting in the first place. They simply say he's a hostage and then he converts. Converting to Islam. Life not enough info. After release. In November 2019, the U.S. Afghanistan government and the Taliban group had a breakthrough in negotiation which resulted in a prisoner swap deal that would set Weeks and Kevin free. Okay. Timothy went back to Sydney, Australia to recover where he joined social media to promote peace 
and encouraged negotiations between the government and Taliban fighters. After his release, many attributed his decision to convert to Islam to Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, of this he refuted. He was even referred to renowned psychiatrist, and they ruled out Stockholm Syndrome. Some of his so family members it? have accepted his decision, but he said it was still a challenge to educate them about Islam. In 2020, at the invitation of the Taliban, Weeks attended the signing of a peace deal between the Afghan government and the Taliban. The commanders of the group met Jibril with apologies on arrival. Jibril now spends his time as a part-time activist and focuses on highlighting Afghan issues. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Disappointed, I have to say, because this information is absolutely amazing. This is huge, but at the same time, this video just scratched the surface. We didn't really find out anything about this man other that he was a hostage and then he became free, became Muslim, became an activist. All right, fair enough. But what I was interested in is, of course, to find out how he thought about Islam prior to Islam and what made him convert. How is he sitting there in his cell, apparently surrounded by Muslims, mistreating him and then somehow, magically, miraculously, he converts. He must have seen something truthful about Islam. What was that? How did he recognize that Islam is a religion of peace in the midst of war? This would be my question to this man so i find the subject very interesting and i will look further i will do some research and hopefully find an interview with this man all right guys but this is it for today's video anyways if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon all the links are in the description box below guys thank you so much for your ongoing support as always may god bless you all much love and peace